Lenny Martinez just finished his first ever Grand Tour, the 2023 La Vuelta, and at just 20 years of age, printed his name in every history book there is. His determination led him to the Reed jersey in stage six, which made him the youngest leader in the race's history. But how did Lenny manage to pull off such a spectacular performance? And what can we expect from him in the future? Lenny Martinez, a young and rising star in the world of professional cycling, had already made quite a name for himself in the Vuelta a España. With five top 10 finishes in as many stages, his journey had been nothing short of impressive. But little did he know, stage six had a series of unexpected challenges waiting for him. The day began like any other, with the peloton gearing up for the second summit finish of the race. Lenny, now donning the coveted white jersey instead of Remco Evenepoel, was well aware that the race had some tough terrain ahead. The stage covered a gruelling 11-kilometre climb with an average gradient of 8%. But what awaited Lenny was not just the mountainous ascent, his adventure would start much earlier. Only 10 kilometres into the stage, the peloton was fiercely fighting for the coveted breakaway spots when disaster struck. Lenny Martinez took a tumble in a crash. Luckily, his teammates Romain Gregoire and Sam Watson were quick to lend a hand, pulling him back into contention. The stage quickly unfolded into a chaotic battle as multiple groups formed and the peloton split repeatedly. Benoit Vaugrenard, one of Lenny's teammates, recalled the madness, saying, It was a crazy stage. We knew there would be a big fight because everyone thought that Soodle Quickstep was going to give up the red jersey, but we didn't expect it to last so long. After about 40 kilometres of relentless racing, several groups finally managed to establish significant gaps. Among the select few who made the cut was Lenny Martinez, along with Michael Storer and Rudy Mollard, both fellow Groupama FDJ riders. Rudy Mollard explained how it went down, saying, it went in a long uphill part where several small groups got clear. First, we had Michael in front, then I also went and Lenny followed at the top. With the breakaway established, the race intensified. Benoit Vaugrenard revealed their strategy, saying, We wanted to have Michael in front to fight for the stage, but when the group went clear, we heard Lenny's name. From there, it was on, and it was pretty well done by him. Lenny himself shared his perspective, saying, I didn't want to join the breakaway at the start, but as the race went on, I saw that it was difficult to enter it. I told myself, it will be a hard fight, and when it will finally go, it will be difficult for the peloton to control. I saw a big group ahead and I jumped across. I followed my instinct and I think I was right. As the race unfolded, the various groups didn't merge until around kilometre 70. Lenny and his teammates suddenly found themselves among 40 formidable rivals, including renowned riders like Sepp Kuss, Mark Soler, Mikkel Lander and others. Benoit explained, We had a gap of six minutes and we knew we could have a good opportunity. But the race had to settle down because there was a lot of attacking in the group. With the help of his teammates, Lenny Martinez embraced the challenge, leading the charge and pulling the group. Rudy Mollard recalled the tough conditions, saying, It hurt because it was a front wind all along. It wasn't easy, but it was good to have three guys up there, including Lenny. I think we couldn't do better. By becoming a part of the front group, Lenny Martinez had taken a giant leap toward becoming the virtual leader of the race, with a 17-second gap overall. Overwhelmed by the unfolding events, Lenny humbly admitted, I still don't realise what is happening to me. As the stage unfolded, the leading group had managed to extend their lead to a whopping seven minutes. But the main pack wasn't willing to let them get away that easily. In the final 50 kilometres, they launched a fierce chase, gradually narrowing the gap to just three minutes. This pivotal moment came during a long, gradual uphill climb to Torillas, roughly 20 kilometres from the finish. The leading group, comprised of daring escapees, faced a daunting challenge. However, Lenny's teammate Rudy Mollard and others showed unwavering determination, making tremendous efforts to maintain the lead. This tenacity allowed the breakaway to approach the ultimate test of the day, the climb to Pico del Buitre, with a nearly four-minute advantage over the chasing peloton. At the base of the climb, it was Michael Storer, a fellow rider from the Groupama FDJ team, who seized control of the situation. 
He did an excellent job, Benoit acknowledged, praising Stora's relentless pacing of the group. Stora's efforts whittled down the breakaway to a select group of about 15 riders, setting the stage for the climactic showdown. With four kilometers to go, the attacks began. Ina Rubio launched the first assault, and in a matter of moments, Lenny Martinez, along with Romain Bardet, bridged the gap to join the fray. It was a pivotal moment in the race, with Sepp Kuss, a formidable opponent, also making his move. Knowing the danger Kuss posed, the team had a plan. We knew that Sepp Kuss was the most dangerous man, Benoit explained. They instructed Lenny, now you just do a time trial to the line, don't think too much, and we'll do the math at the finish. As the riders pushed themselves to their limits, Lenny found himself trailing by 20 seconds with just two kilometers to go, and 30 seconds at the Flamme Rouge, indicating the final kilometer. Yet, the young rider refused to surrender. He summoned his inner strength and embarked on a breathtaking last kilometre. After an extraordinary display of determination and resilience, Lenny crossed the finish line in second place, a mere 26 seconds behind the stage winner. This remarkable performance also secured him the coveted Vuelta's red jersey. Benoit recalled the intense moments, saying, We thought that the jersey was going to slip through our fingers because the gap increased up to 35 seconds, not counting the bonus seconds. Lenny's triumph was nothing short of extraordinary. At just 20 years old, in his first Grand Tour and first year as a professional rider, he had become the youngest leader in the race's history and the second youngest in all Grand Tours combined. It was a dream come true, as Lenny expressed. It's incredible. It's a dream for any rider. I still don't realise what is happening to me. It's something so big. It was my dream when I came to the Vuelta. You think about it, but you also think that it is very hard to get, yet today it is done. Rudy Mollard, himself a former red jersey wearer in the Vuelta, couldn't contain his excitement. He exclaimed, It's incredible, of course we didn't expect that this morning. The team has been incredible since the start. We were again three up front today. Everyone did their job, and Lenny took the jersey. We couldn't have hoped for better. We need to enjoy it. Lenny's teammate, Benoit, echoed the sentiment of an excellent day for them. We've had a pretty extraordinary first week, he said. Lenny was already over the moon with his white jersey. With the red, it will be even bigger. We hope he stays on the moon for as long as possible. We'll keep on going without pressure and come what may. After the intense battle of stage six, Lenny Martinez now led the general classification, holding a precious eight-second lead over Sepp Kuss and a significant 51-second advantage over Mark Sola. He was visibly excited about what he had just achieved. How was your first day in the red jersey? Did some uh, important riders come and congratulate you? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, important rider do, do that. And yes, it's a very, very beautiful, very beautiful day. And uh, yes, uh, it's very good. More to come. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. But with the red jersey came a sense of responsibility. Lenny knew that defending it wouldn't be easy. He admitted, we'll need to defend the jersey and it is almost scary to have it because it is something so big. I will do my best for the GC. It was anyway the goal before the Vuelta. It doesn't change my plans. And now that the Vuelta is over and Sepp Kuss finished at the very top, we know that Lenny wasn't able to defend the red jersey. However, the young man showed great potential and made himself one of the more feared participants in the Grand Tour scene.